Okay, we are recording. Right, okay. Hello. Two English chaps, cups of teas. There you go, nothing like a cup of tea. Yeah, welcome to um, the next episode of our TV show, which is called... Philosophical Tangents. Philosophical Tangents. We are back. Um, so, hope you enjoyed the first one. Um, I forgot what the first one was about. To it was about Bovius. Bovius, yeah, that's it, Bovius. Was Bovius boring? Yeah, a little bit. Really? Yeah. No, no, he, he was interesting, interesting, but... Mate, um, he's fascinating. Right. Anyway, well, as you say, maybe we should move the times. Yeah, move, move with the times. So, yeah. um, so where are we, man? Where, where's socialism at? Where is where is socialism at? Is socialism dead? Yeah, I think so. Right, socialism. So, like, like Nietzsche would say, like, God is dead and I've killed him. So, Boris Johnson can say, socialism is dead and I've killed it. No, I think Jeremy Corbyn killed it. Jeremy Corbyn. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, controversial. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna have like some of the cult out looking for me tonight, but. Um, <laughs> But yeah, yeah. I, I, I honestly think that Labour needs to go back to the Tony Blair era. I think, um, I'm not saying to go back to Tony Blair, yeah. but going back to that kind of Blair right type of Blair politics. Blair right, yes, Blair sends left. Like, so when you water down your beliefs so much that they're, they're no longer really anything. No, I think what it anything. is... No, no, anything, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no it's because you're, the, the thing is, I, I find that with socialists, they're so principled mm. that they're not willing to move from their position to bring people back with them. They're they idealistic. Ex- yeah, they expect everyone to come to them, whereas the Blairite will kind of reach out. They'll, they'll try and drift over a bit to try and grab that centre ground, to try and be, bring people into the fold, do you know? But, um, yeah, I, that's, how, that's what I think. Okay. I just like... See, where I start with socialism is, like, what, what's everyone so scared of? Like, what, what, is, what is the, the white working-class man on the street? What, what is he so afraid of? Control. Bureaucracy, control... Um, 1984, you know, 1984. Well, like, so, I've had, I've, I've had lived experience of visiting socialist countries. So the Scandinavian socialist model, which for me is a very gentle intertwining of capitalism and Marxism Mm -hmm. into a brand of socialism, whereby I went to Copenhagen and everyone was, it was like a utopia. Everyone was cycling around. They didn't lock up their bikes. Didn't need to. There's no crime. People don't steal. Okay. People don't steal. People do not steal. I was I was in the capital city. I didn't see one policeman the whole weekend. No. Property is theft. Pro- well, maybe. But um, <laughs> I was walking outside a restaurant, and there was a baby in a buggy. And I said to my friend, I said, "What you're going to steal the baby?" I said, "I said no." I said, "Mate, I said someone's left their baby there." Like, oh, they just we, left the child out. We we better alert, in their capital city, and I said, "Like we better alert the police." And he said to me, "No, no, no. People do that here." Can you imagine that at Oxford Street? It would be unheard of, because crime is so high in London, and like a good reason for that, my my good friend at work, uh, Bill Bill Whitney, he said uh, it's it's the proximity of the haves and the haves not have nots in London. But in Copenhagen, you have such a such so, so more e- equal, a much more equal egalitarian yes distribution of wealth. Yeah, that the crime therefore is so much lower, and their prison system isn't punitive; it's focused on rehabilitation. Exactly. Okay. Just, so, so what do they do to rehabilitate? No, like let you play Scrabble. Like, I don't, I don't, like, <laughs> don't, don't like, you think the good old dark, like the dark and gloomy, damp cells of Nelson Mandela? Like, do you not think that changed him? It took twenty eight years or so. Well, so maybe suffering is noble. And Bovius, obviously, he was in a prison cell. Yeah, and and he was quite creative in his he, suffering. He was, but I think that's maybe the few and not the many. So <laughs> obviously, Corbyn was for the many, not the few. Not the, yeah, for the many, not so, the few. So, like in in Scandinavia, they didn't have like a. a f- so it's Norway, um, Denmark, uh, Sweden, Finland. They're all like these socialist uh, Scandinavian countries, and they have this like, equal distribution of wealth. Their education system is a lot more relaxed. Like their their working hours are far more relaxed. Like finish, people finish at three o'clock, they go home, and because Scandinavia is more northerly, their days are longer in the summer. Oh. They just have lovely barbecues. And just socialise oh, nice. and relax. Yeah, it's like a really co- com- like community cohesion is really high, and the happiness index they're far higher than Britain. Yeah. And so when when I find that people say, "Oh, don't like socialism," don't like, like, I think their their position is one based on fear. I think mm. I think I think there's an irrationality. The unknown. Yeah, the unknown. So when you was on LBC the other day, because obviously you're you're famous, um, I think there's an irrationality to the working class. Continually voting against their interests. Ah, that's a good idea. There you go. So, but so you got to ask why are the working class so alienated to ideas which would benefit them. Mm. Well, why are they? 
that's, well, a, that's a good question. I mean, what, propaganda. What is it? Like the right wing, the right wing press in this country controls seventy five percent of the press. You control the, the press. You control people's minds. Mm-hmm. I mean, look look at um, communist uh, Eastern Europe. There was only one paper Pravda. Mm. Okay, so clearly Stalin saw the value of controlling the information flow. Yeah. Uh, and so in, in the UK, there's there's very few truly socialist papers. Mm. Um, and I, I, would, I wouldn't argue, if people think on The Guardian's socialist, I wouldn't say it was socialist. I would say they have some socialist-friendly writers. Owen Jones? Yeah. but um, in, Owen Jones? Yeah. And Owen Jones? Yeah. Anyone in, else? Oh. Owen Jones? Uh, in, but in the main, I'd say that The Guardian is a liberal paper. Were you really? For, for, for the bourgeois. For the bourgeois. For the bourgeois. Or for the petty bourgeois. Uh, the pe- oh, be it petty bourgeois uh, or bourgeois. Well, same thing. Uh, one well, and no, the they're, same. They're not one and the same, which is why we made the distinction between the two. However, um, it's a paper which is targeted at that, um, I'd say, bourgeois left at petty and petty bourgeois left elite. Okay, well, let me ask you a question because I'm, I'm just an ordinary geezer, yeah? Ordinary geezer? I didn't finish school. It's true. Yeah, don't have many qualifications. Just an ordinary bloke, yeah? You're oh, a teacher. But, but you've done eight years of degree study. Yeah, yeah. Don't tell everyone that. I, I want them to think I'm a bit dumb, you know? <laughs> but but still, like... So so just say, like... Mm-hmm. If we're getting all this now, mm-hmm. we're under a capitalist model, yeah. would you say? With a little bit of a what? little bit of um, state but, intervention, because obviously we've got the welfare state, we've got the NHS. They are socialist schemes. So they are socialist schemes? Yeah, they were set yeah. up on, under the Labour government post-war. Right. But, but do you not think that um, that the private sector is needed in order to complement it. Like, for example, just say the NHS starts to fail on certain things. Mm. They've needed that extra funding from somewhere to keep it going. There is a capitalist argument for when there's a boom. Like Reagan, when Reagan um, pursued the left, the left club, so he um, adjusted taxation so that it was lower, which meant that the rich or wealth producers, job creators... Mm-hmm. Um, trickle down. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say trickle down... I'd say that they had a lot more money which they could invest and then, yeah. just, then they created a boom or a false boom but still a boom false in the 1980s um, which the Soviet Union could not compete with because the, so- the Soviet Union can't manufacture value in the same way which a capitalist system can. Yeah, well, why not then? What, if socialism is so great, why not? Well, I think the problem is is that like socialism or Marxism proper is still state capitalism and because most of the world was antagonistic Mm. towards the Soviet Union, perhaps trading links were uh, poorer. Do you know what I think? Mm. I think we're fucked either way, mate. Yeah, because, <laughs> I, I, yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, look at now. So, okay, we've got a, a privately owned press. Yeah, yeah would you argue which is, that? Which is owned by, by a super rich elite. Yeah. Okay, so then what happens when that press then is owned by the government? We get the right. same thing, do we not? Yeah, well, you, you get a form of... Uh, form we, we, of we get, like, uh, uh, on the spectrum, we get two opposing sides that have the same aim. Well, yeah, I understand. Because I do notice, like when mm. when you get press articles, mm. if you read something you agree with, you share it. Mm. So you say that. Well, I don't know if you've said this yet, but mm. read in your mind right now. I could kind of see that um, mm. the the press controls people. Would you agree to that to a certain extent? Their thinking, manipulation. I, I, I definitely think the press has a high degree of full control over this country. Yeah. yeah, but then how is it then that you can reject and you know that? Like, wouldn't we all be indoctrinated within? what the press is telling us. So if they're saying Brexit's good, why is there Remainers? Well, I think that's the intrinsic value of education, that uh, some of us are educated enough to realise that... But they're educated on both sides. Oh, there, there are, but I, I don't want this to sound arrogant. I think that... Oh, please be arrogant. I, I think there's more of an intellectual uh, strata to the left. I'm not saying... Like, there are some very intellectual right-wing... Ah, people. okay. So that's very think, interesting that you said that. There's more intellectuals. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that you said that, this, yeah. this intellectual strata. Yeah. Because um, one thing I've noticed... So with the Labour leadership election, mm. a lot of people are uh, trying to pressure Keir Starmer to stand down. Right, yeah. Yeah? Do you, do you see well, where I'm going with this? Because he's a male. Yeah, because he's a male. Yeah? yeah. Okay, but that identity politics, I think. Indeed. I know you hate it. and it, this d- is your, well, no, no, but, yeah, no, but the point I'm, I want to get with this, with this intellectual strata yeah. is why is it... If, if the left do claim ownership mm. of that intellectualism mm. for rights, for everything like that, yeah. how is it that they need to use positive discrimination in order to get a female candidate? And the Tories, on the other hand, mm. do not use positive discrimination, yet they've had two... Female prime ministers. It's it's an irony of a system where mm. one is there to benefit uh, 
anyone but men hasn't produced a female leader and one system which uses competition has had two female leaders so it's, it is, is an irony which doesn't really make much sense but um, you know reality doesn't conform to logic mm. however uh Logic doesn't come like, to logic. I, I, I think that the Labour Party is too invested in identity politics, and I think that's one reason why... Is that the downfall? Is that is that why, do you think, Labour is kind of... Well, it's, it's the, those values don't really chime with the rest of the country, which is more conservative, mm. uh, in a sense. So once we get out of the cities, um, most people are more conservative socially, and I don't think they... They're really, not economically. Well, they're, they're not into these like woke, so-called woke politics, are they? Yeah. And identity politics, I would I would argue, is not woke anyway. Yeah. Um, and that that's not that's not being averse to female empowerment yeah. or the empowerment of any BAME people. Because yeah. Lawrence Fox, he doesn't like woke people, does he? No, but I I I wouldn't I wouldn't put my master of intellectualism next to his. But a lot of people would. Um. Yeah. I, th- I think they not would. myself. <laughs> but, <laughs> but sometimes you can be right for the wrong reasons. Yeah. You know, I think, and he on one point, he was right, but for for the wrong reasons. What I was he right on? I mean, holistically, I think if we're going to get into identity <laughs> politics, if I'm we're going, if you, we're going to I'm get into, you. if we're going to get into identity politics, uh, I think that social class has been forgotten. Yeah. Um, and there's an obsession with with race, mm-hmm. and that is not to say that race is not important, but according to kind of Marxism proper. Um, like issues of race and gender are kind of subsumed into social class, mm-hmm. and once the you know the working class is emancipated in this country, everyone would benefit. Yeah. So women, men, B M A B A B B M E B A M E B A M E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So basically, everyone would would benefit from a social yeah. system in that way. But even more so, white people. No, I wouldn't say even more so because then. That, that would defeat the object of socialism, which is uh, the great equaliser, isn't it? Okay, but this obsession with race, mm. white people started it. They did. <laughs> they started the obsession. I, I, I would agree, because racism is a system which was created by white people. Yeah, And we benefited from it. White people have benefited from racism. Okay, I say we, but yeah. like... I get to the point that white, white people have, of course, benefited from racism. Right. So, so then ignorance. can you not understand the point that actually some, like, I'll, I'll say some... White people were in better positions to start life than a lot of black it would, people. It would, it would be remiss of me to not uh, acknowledge that. However, I don't think that um, a someone that's educated at Eton is commensurate to someone who's educated in Bradford, like a slum from Bradford. You know, like, no, I, so I, I completely agree with the, you. The, there. The, yeah, yeah. So that's where I, that's where I talk about social class being forgotten yeah. and the kind of the main aim of the labour movement is to emancipate the working class and it's and many people in the labour movement have forgotten that and they get consumed by identity politics and identity politics is important yeah like the emancipation of of women the emancipation of b a m e communities is important but, but class is the most important class should thing. be should be the most important focus so, so you're basically everything. saying that if, if you deal with the issue of class everything else falls into place well i'm not well i would put uh, an addendum on that i'd say okay. if we deal with the issue of class um then we can well this, it does why does it have to be and or you know like i, I think we should oh, you're liberal thinking that no it's not liberal uh I think we should deal with the issue of class and that should be the overriding concern of the Labour movement. But that is not to say that um, I, people whose identities is seen to hold them back shouldn't be addressed. Mm. It's just the primary focus should be... Are you saying only if it does hold them back? So like individual ca- treat it as an individual case. So if someone is discriminated against on an individual merit, then you deal I mean, with that rather maybe, than making it a... Maybe I'm, I'm confused on this. Maybe I am, but... I'd be uncomfortable to say that we shouldn't support um, people who suffer from discrimination. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think anyone who suffers from discrimination should be supported. Yeah, I'm just not sure that the best way the to best do, way to do, do it, it yeah, okay. is therefore to disenfranchise. Positive dis- yeah, yeah, pos- so called positive discrimination. Yeah, and disenfranchise. As I said, like the 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 boy from Bradford who who's on a council estate, he hasn't really received much help, has he? Mm. Because social class has been forgotten about, mm. so if 
it's, it's that. And there's this white working class boys thing mm. that, that, that are falling well, behind in the massively in education behind. system. Yeah, as, as a teacher you can see it. But they massively fall behind. Um, and the thing is, it's like the ambition of a conservative government has been to try and make them more competitive. Mm. It's like you know round pegs and square holes. So I'm not quite sure that the current um, curriculum is the ideal diet for them. Because if you think if they come from a working class background, then you know not every working class family is split up. So if, if they live at home with their dad and their dad does a trade or another kind of mm. blue collar job, where does he see his father, his identity in his schooling? And that, that's where I think there's a, like a disjuncture there between the education system, which is based on a kind of um, neoliberal classical um, education system mm -hmm. born out of the Enlightenment and the modern world. You know, does postmodern world we are now. Postmodern, you know, does does learning the works of Shakespeare equip a white working class boy to be a plumber? To be honest, love Shakespeare, but I love Shakespeare. I you know, know, some people love algebra, love but like, why the fuck? Yeah, yeah, are you yeah. So, use it? yeah, like, well, if you work on a building site. Like, no. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> you, all right. Might, you might. You might use it. I'm. I'm. Oh, sure, you know. Like. Like surveyors. I'm sure they use a, a form of algebra. I doubt um, it. I doubt it. Well, at least a high high degree of math mathematical skill. And like pioneers used quite a lot on, yeah. on in building science. Yeah. Has to be. Doesn't and it? on memes. Yeah. I know. I mean, I I even used pi to to work out which pizzas were worth the most. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. You can use. Oh, of course. It's it's a it's a circle. Anyway, we're digressing. <laughs> what a massive yeah, yeah, tangent. Yeah, we're going on a tangent. What this a is tangent. Not good. Not good at right, all. So socialism. Yeah. Is it to tell you? I'm sorry. You just said something that almost made me spit my tea out. Is we need to return to Tony Blair. Like, Tony Blair. He's yeah. he, he's the guy. Like what? Well, the war criminal. That the war. Like yeah. to to be honest with you, like Teflon Tony. I, I mean, look, he fucked up with Iraq. Well, you know there are mistakes, and then there's five hundred thousand people dead mistakes. Yeah, I know. You know? It's not good, and it's I, I think bad. we're still seeing the consequences of it now. Even oh well, think of the PTSD of the orphans of Iraq. Yeah. Yeah, like it's it's going to be, like Iraq is 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 a nation which is going to suffer from, like generational, um, trauma. Mm. Yeah, so all of those children who've seen their parents die, mm. and all those bombs and and all those terrorist events and the power, resultant power vacuum, it's a flat desert country, and America could not control it. Mm. So, so for the yeah. Iraqi people, yeah. do you not think that they would look at us now and yeah. think you're white privilege? I, I think anyone who was who was Iraqi, and I've, I know an Iraqi yeah. uh, man. I met him in Cyprus, and very good man, Mohammed Al Buzz, and uh, Big up. Lo yeah, you know, yeah, respect to my brother. Uh, anyway, so he um he's he's a very interesting individual. He's actually Kurdish, but he's got an Iraqi passport. And he says like he just can't go anywhere with his Iraqi passport. He can't do it. Like he can't go from country to country. He's constantly stopped. There's this other yeah. interesting dynamic here because I my local kebab shop. Yeah, is a Kurdish guy. Yeah, but he swears blind that he is Iraqi, and he yeah. will not say that I'm Kurdish. And the other Kurd there, yeah. he gets angry at him for that <laughs> because he's oh. not he he can't proudly say I'm Kurdish. Identity politics again. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so that's their version of identity politics. Oh, well, everyone has it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> like but, everyone, yeah. But Tony Blair, okay. Yeah. If we if we just. I'm not, right, so I'm not put, saying forget Iraq, but, but just I'm just put, saying put let's look at some of the other policies, look that, at his broader policies. That, that he brought in. What? So PFI finance. So so PFI. So obviously we Yeah, well what we're is, talking. Well now, yeah, because um, the amount of interest. Can't even get into my my workplace and yeah. can't we can't call an assembly at short notice because we have to book the hall for a month in advance. Mm. You know, and that's uh, Tony Blair's fault. It's it's almost like a Kafka novel. Well, he's the one that started the ball uh, rolling. Now, I'm, I'm not going to talk too overtly on academisation. Um, however, I think education and, and uh, a business model shouldn't quite mix. I don't, I don't think... Mm. I won't, won't talk too much on that publicly. Um, it's about the children profiting, not... Children, well, education is primarily about, about students, isn't it? Yeah. And they're... And they're, they're... But is it also not about intellectualising mm. students and maybe taking them out of their class? Education Even in the class, should always class. enhance social mobility. Yes, that's 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 what it should should do. It should liberate uh, people. So if it does, mm. and they get liberated from the working class, and they find themselves in a nice middle class home, mm. and then they find themselves making lots of profits, 
then the working class say you're a snob. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> so if you do well within the socialist model, if you do really good for yourself, mm. people don't like it. I wouldn't say that. I would say if you live in a capitalist system and you become educated and quote unquote woke, and then you go on to get a job which is bourgeois, doesn't mean that you should. Doesn't mean that you know. Socialists, Forget your roots. Well, socialists won't hate you. You know, for for making money. I don't think. Are you sure. I'm pretty sure. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm pretty sure of that fact. I don't know. Uh, you know, like they they won't hate you. It's just about re- retaining. They just call you a Tory. No, it's about retaining. No, they just say you're bourgeois left, and I have to accept I'm bourgeois there's left. There's a bourgeois left. I, there, I am. If there's a. You are the bourgeois. Left. Left. I am the bourgeois left. <laughs> he is the bourgeois well, left. Like I'm, you know, my my dad was a journalist, and my mum uh, is a banker, and uh, you know, I'm degree educated. How um, are you embraced within? What within, the kind of blue collar? The, well, the, that's the, the rank and files. No, the the, the Labour movement is no longer. I'd say a movement which is comprised, and this is the massive issue, it's the distance of what it used to be. Under Keir Hardy, the Labour Party was made up of truly working class people. Yeah. Now, but the conditions were there. Well, now, look, well, look, look, look at who's come to dominate the Labour Party. I don't know. Like a lot of students from London. And if you're a student, you are you immediately petty bourgeois. Yeah. By definition. Do you know what I mean? So... Uh, so maybe that's the problem. Lot, maybe the a lot of people won't like that. Like won't like that statement. A lot of people won't. <laughs> but I think th- th- there's a truth to it. If, if you are degree educated, yeah. you are privileged. Yeah, you are privileged. And white you, privilege. Well, why? No, no, no <laughs> not necessarily. And why did you? Like, I think like, I think there's more. Um, there's like the amount of black females that go to universities is mm-hmm. highly pronounced. Extremely educated class. So that's a know, good thing. It's a, it's a brilliant thing. Yeah. Uh, for for society. And that increased, thank you to the Lib Dems in government. Did it really? Yeah. I, I thought that they they put loads of debt onto. But it increased <laughs> it increased the the um, social mobility intake from those from poorer backgrounds, and that is true. If you go onto UCAS, mm. more 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 pupils from deprived backgrounds have applied and gone to university now than ever before. I don't know, now Fact. I'm saddled with debts. Okay, but I'm saddled with <laughs> debt, but I'm not paying the debt, so <laughs> it's not really a debt. So, like, you can go to university, but as long as you don't get a job, everything's okay. What's wrong with, <laughs> what's wrong with paying for your yeah. education? So, like, retrospectively, like in a, um, what do you call it, a graduate because, tax? Yeah. Because... Should you not put back in... If we do not value education and we just give yeah. it away for free, should we not value it? I don't, I don't think not for the capitalists, not for the profit. If, if you look at Scotland, where you don't have to pay, mm-hmm. they have fewer people attending university, mm. uh, proportionately. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue that, that that's the case. And I think if, if we invest in our, in our youth, then that could only benefit society. Yeah? I, don't, I don't see why, why does it have to come back to the individual. This is the problem with the capitalist model, the individual's... At the heart of everything, really, we like should we put the society ahead of the individual at the expense of the individual? I think so. Really? Yeah, I, mean, I, I generally, I generally Shoot think so. Sean, take him out. There you go. So I'm, I'm not a liberal. <laughs> I'm, I'm a, I'm a socialist, so and it, it's different. See, I'm all for the liberal, yeah, because I say that I, I, I get where you're coming from as well. I am for society too. Yeah. I'm a social liberal. Yeah, which is yeah. a bit different to a classical or. Neoliberal. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't describe myself as as a liberal in that way because you don't matter. No, it's not that. I'm not. I'm not saying individuals don't matter. I just think that if we just elevate the poorest class in this country out of their misery, it's just going to be very beneficial. You know, and that might upset an individual who thinks their bourgeois concerns come first. You know, okay. But am I, am I supposed to care? But, that's, <laughs> but, but yeah. there's still liberal principles yeah. within that. So, like um, John Stuart Mill. The harm principle. Do no harm. Do no harm. So so do have them as much freedom as you want so long as you, you harm no one else. So to me, that's what being a liberal is. Mm, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think we should harm people. Yeah, but why not? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's immoral. Yeah, like, yeah but yeah. what is harm? Like, let us question what harm is. This is really... Is it, is, so are we... Are Emotional we, harm, physical harm... Are we analysing this under a structure of, of socialism? We're, we're, no, no, we're, yeah. we're analysing it under a structure of what is now. Mm. So social work now would define physical harm, emotional harm, 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 harm. <laughs> so, so 
the way that we see harm now, mm. obviously we, we know that people can be harmed in different ways. But so how would it be different under a socialist well, well, model? Some people aren't very resilient to change. Then they're going to get harmed. Yeah, well then... Snowflakes. Yes, exactly, that's what I mean. But, right, right, so what's wrong with being a snowflake, though? If that's what's who the individual is. Well, I'm, I'm a classic socialist snowflake, aren't I? Anyway, um, <laughs> but I don't really think I am. Uh, that's, that's the thing, because I don't really... I don't think I'm a snowflake. Anyway, where's this going? <laughs> I don't know. Where's it going? Where's it going? Where's it going? Where are we going? Am I a snowflake? Was, was that the question? Is, is there a problem with being a snowflake? Like, is there a problem? Yes, there is. Why? Like, what, what, what's the problem if other people are more in tune to their senses, they're more in tune to the world, to their feelings, it's, it's, it's faux their outrage. emotions? Well, it's, it's not. It's faux outrage, isn't it? It's, it's, like, like, it's, it's, people, it's people getting very excitable and, offend, and self-righteously offended for the sake of appearing to be extremely moral. And I think actually what's, what's more moral is not faux outrage, is deeds. Yeah, go out and do some good deeds, like put some money into a food bank. Like, and rather than, like, if you feel outraged, be the change that you want to see. I'm offended. Yeah, so. <laughs> I'm extremely offended that, right now. But rather than like be offended and like frothing at the mouth, put, put that sense of political angst and ire you know, like where your wallet is or where your actions are. Yeah, support your local union. Go out and help poor people in a food bank. So you're, you know? so you're basically saying... Campaign for the rights of the disenfranchised. So, so you're not actually being anti-snowflake, but you're, you're basically... This is snowflake pragmatism, well, by the sound of it. Because... Maybe, maybe snowflake stoicism. Um, oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's literally saying it yeah. should not end with being a snowflake, but once you become one, there, there are things that snowflakes can do like, is this I'm, what you're saying? Yeah, I'm, well, well, yeah, I'm well I'm, to a degree. I'm saying don't get upset. I prefer you to get angry. And if you do get angry, channel that anger and make it motivate you. But why anger? Like, well, the, because why, some, why can't we embrace do, other emotions? Because I think when when you look at a political system which rewards privilege, it can make you feel angry. Yeah, but yeah. sad as well. Yeah, you get like disillusioned. Yeah, but you know, I think, disillusionment can also bring about change. I I think that. Anger is just it gives you more gravitas and you know motivation. So, like for instance, Jeremy Corbyn, love him, and like in the Labour movement, he's he's revered. But I just felt his style wasn't abrasive enough. In what sense? Like well, what, what? What was it to his style that failed? Well, he's just a bit mealy mouthed, wasn't he? Mm. You know, when we look at Bob Crow, when he was he was like he would stick like I loved how um there's a strength there was a strength to his his manner of speech and when when he spoke in interviews like with Pax he, he never took anything from a hard interview he just gave it right back to them mm. well, so I always felt that Corbyn like and I loved, loved his ideals but just he, he, he couldn't be abrasive it wasn't in his nature so then surely politics has got to be more than socialism then it's got to be about other things as well unfortunately what chimes with people isn't just issues like people right. should vote on issues but we know. But is this not the problem with Labour then? They're, they're focused too much on socialism rather than on the issues and on other things. Well, I think they're focused... I, I do think there is an overemphasis on socialism right now mm. and that's why people are probably rejecting it. And they're like, do you know what? Like, At the minute, I can't mm. pay me rent, I can't do this, and you're talking about socialism. Yeah, but socialism would help those, those people. I think the problem is people don't actually understand what socialism is. And mm. I think a lot of people that say they're socialists don't understand what socialism is. And what they think socialism is, is identity politics. Mm. Really, it should be the emancipation of of the the working class, the, the working class, and alleviating pro- poverty and trying to equalize society between two different classes, the rich and the poor. Yeah. You know, like as um, Jean Jacques Rousseau would say, man, man is um, born free, born free, yet everywhere he's in chains. He's in chains, and therefore those chains need to. And I think you know, just just imagine if we reset, just imagine if we could reset wealth back back to zero. Yeah. Like there would be a genuine meritocracy, wouldn't they? I mean, or, or, or there'd be a, a race to the top. There'd, there'd be people killing each other, trying to get the wealth. Is this not why we're here? Because when the land was free, do you remember in America when mm. um, people could claim their own land and they said, right, the land's there, go and claim it. People used to go put their flags in. Mm. Well, I got that from a film far and away with Tom Cruise. Like, I don't mm. know if it's true, it could be fiction, but... Tom Cruise. But oh, yeah. You'll know, he's a teacher. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they claimed their own land. Yeah. yeah. And then they built, built on it. So, I mean... Um, if we go back to zero, mm. then we have that and people were getting shot, they were getting killed for their... That's because land is a resource which is finite 
and humans will always desire territory. But it's not is it, um um uh, it's not everything for night in in this in this world. Well, I mean, no. So how can we have socialism? Something, some things are infinite. Like what? Patience. <laughs> Bollocks. <laughs> like. I think we need to remember that socialism is, is essentially an economic system mm. which is there to redistribute wealth in a more fair way like they do in Scandinavian countries. And, you know, it's, it's a halfway house between Marxism proper and capitalism. It's just, it's just that happy halfway between. So if you, if, you go to, if you go to Denmark, you don't think, oh, I'm, you know, I'm behind an iron curtain. Yeah. You just think this is a society where wealth has been distributed fairly and therefore crime is low and people are happier. Mm. And that's simply what I want from the UK. Right, okay, so now I'm going to go into Plato. What's on your plate? On my plate. Okay, so um, I've got a bit of Plato as well. We both got a bit of Plato, so I used to play. I used to play with Plato when I was um, in nursery. Don't be rude. In nursery. <laughs> were you Plato? Yeah, but, you know, like you'd you'd make shapes out of it. Okay, so in Plato. Okay, so that's um, a bad joke. Anyway, yeah. I will laugh later when I okay. edit it. Yeah. Out. <laughs> <laughs> um, the challenge to Socrates. Okay, so in the challenge to Socrates. Mm. They're talking about morality and immorality. Morality, yeah. Yeah. Is that more than morality? Morality, yeah. 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 So, um, except for Cockney accent. Yeah. But anyway, so now what the de- what the debate tends to go into mm. is that moral things tend to produce immoral outcomes. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. So pe- people that are moral suffer in life; they struggle, whereas those that are immoral tend to have all the successes. The rewards. So they break the rules. Yeah, because they break the rules. So if we go on your socialist model, just say that your socialist model is fair and it's good Mm. and it's moral. Good systems always open open to abuse. Ah. So this is the point. This is why I wanted to bring Plato into it now. Like the NHS. Yeah, like the NHS. So so this is the the point. And I think this is what gets up people's sleeves. So when I hear arguments from the right, from Mm. right wing, and... I know lots of people that are right wing. I know lots of people that are left wing. Oh, but so fabric of society. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I listen to both sides. So what mm. the right tend to say is, whenever they complain, it's because someone has abused one of the systems. So someone's abusing the housing market, or they're abusing the NHS. Well, who, who, who do they usually select for that abuse? Uh, they, who, they, who are they usually referring to? You're bringing identity politics into it. Oh, you know, like, <laughs> this is the thing. So the right will say, oh, and the, what, what, what we both know, yeah. the right will focus on immigrants. Yes. Yeah. But they don't focus on the good that immigrants do. They don't focus on the fact that how many Indian doctors have we got that, that run the NHS? How many Nigerian nurses have we got? Yeah. How, but many, this, this... how many Polish porters, you know? Yeah. So it was like... but, but that's because they're, they're moral and this is the outcome that they're getting. They're getting a bad, do you know? So, so the point I'm trying to make is, mm. is that the left and right both have their arguments, okay? Yeah. So socialism is a fairer model. Mm. What if it does produce an unfair outcome? And I know you can use Denmark, but let's talk about mm. let's let's just say that we're we're living in a vat, okay, and we're in the UK. Mm. Socialism hasn't been anywhere else, mm. and we're testing it for the first time. Okay, kind of like what post war, post war England, really. Okay, so so what are the problems we're going to face? The rich will be hostile. There will be a press which is hostile. Uh, I, I, I can't really see many problems with a system which gives. Uh, people access at the point of need, you know, mm. what, what, what they need. I think post war England, off you know, 1945 to 1951, the Windrush, that, that well, that, that, that Labour government um, developed, you know, developed the NHS and a welfare state. And I think those things are just beautiful. Mm. You know, it's, it's one, some, and still, people in this country love the NHS, and it's curiously, a lot of people on the right love the NHS, like, you know, patriotic, I love the yeah, NHS. Yeah, they, they do, yeah, that's right. Uh, but it's a socialist It's a socialist thing that they love. Yeah. And if they're a proper right wing, they want it to be like America, surely, with health insurance. Yeah, some of them do. Well, and then people in America die of diabetes on the street. Yeah, I know. They can't get insurance. In the richest country in the world. Yeah, I've seen uh, Michael Moore sicko. Well, you know, America spends more money than the rest of the world combined on armaments, yeah. on arms, uh, and yet still doesn't have enough money to give their the citizens of their country dignity. Yeah, I understand that, but I also understand obviously the the impact of warfare mm. and of the East, mm. and obviously there are interests on both sides, and that's why both sides invest in military, in arms, 
but America are disproportionately like disproportionately disproportionately invest in in uh, armaments, doesn't it? Anyway, we're getting onto a tangent. I mean, what you said was was that what if this uh, a good system leads to uh, a bad um, outcome? Which, which outcome. But, um, again, I'm drawing from Plato here. Yeah. He talks about the community Philosopher King. and and everything. King. Philosopher King, Joe, and Joe Guardians, Barton. Joe Barton. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> so, so so yeah, he he's talking about all these things, and um, so but, uh, my worry is so I, I suppose the argument with capitalism mm. is that when you Examine it for what it is. It's a bad system, but yet it produces winners. It produces very few winners. Very few. This is very the, the, the like, false it's, consciousness it's like the, that Marx it's a game. Spoke it's about. a game of monopoly. Yeah. Yeah. Like you know, if you play monopoly, there can only be one person that wins. Yeah. If you think of like, if you think of that as a greater metaphor, and it's a very simplistic one, but if you think of that as a metaphor for cat capitalism, very few people can be. You know, like for the hierarchy. Mm-hmm. You only have very, very few people at the top, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. And then it works at the hierarchy, um, Maslow. Yes, it's hierarchy of needs. Okay. But th- th- there can only be very few people at the top. Yeah. Like a manager and, and those working? So what about those people at the bottom that make up most of society? What about them? You can't, you can't be a just system. If it only benefits like, you know, like a very, very few people... At the top, and their wealth is really parasitic on the many, isn't it? Okay, but what if you've worked your way up to the top? Yeah, are you saying people should just work to stay where they are? I'm not saying there's there's no degree of social mobility in life because there are people that go from rags to riches. Yeah. And as I said, education is massively important in that. Yeah. Um, so so what I'm saying is an immoral system is bringing a moral kind of outcome. I don't know. I wouldn't say it's a moral outcome. I, but I, I can't say it is because if, if you think of the pyramids, I, I don't think it does bring moral outcomes. And, you know, if you look at, you know, like the world produces enough food to feed the world all over, yet still people die of starvation. Mm. I don't think we can say that the the system. But how much food do we waste? Yeah, we we do waste. So like again, so the wealth is not redistributed fairly. Well, global global wealth isn't distributed fairly either. Yeah. You know, like we we are a world. That, you know, there are there are people all over the world who are in really horrendous conditions. So mm. I don't think I don't think capitalism has, has benefited those people certainly. Yeah. And we don't give foreign aid because we care and we want them to eat. We give foreign aid because we don't want them to rise up and rebel mm. against us. Foreign aid is just a bribe. Yeah, it's a bribe to keep people in their place. Yeah, to, to keep, and to make sure the that... two Ronnies, weren't it? Um... <laughs> uh, I, I I think it's used to keep other nations voting our way at the UN as well. Yeah, and obviously Britain just doesn't care about that anymore because we're no longer a global power. Yeah. So, oh, we will be after Brexit though. <laughs> <laughs> Bring uh... back the empire. <laughs> Oh, well, we know that that's dead in the water, but we, like, <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting because I teach I teach British Empire. Yeah, and it's massively controversial, um, but very fascinating. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, just so, to... so as a teacher, mm-hmm. you know that there are many ills within British Empire history. Yes, there are. Why are they not? Are they taught in yeah. school? Well, they are A level. But they are A level. So what? What's taught? And uh, is it, is it... primary? Uh, sorry, and uh, year eight as well. So it's actually on the national cur- suggestion on the national curriculum. I mean, Jeremy Corbyn said that he wanted to bring bring education mm-hmm. forward in a sense that he wants the ills of the British Empire to be taught in schools because he didn't believe oh. that they were. Well, I think they are to an extent, but, I mean, but it depends on the school you're going to. Like, the, so the national curriculum is only suggested and the academies don't have to follow it, yeah. but they do use it as a basis. I think any school worth their salt will teach about the British Empire mm. and should teach the controversy. So they should teach you know, about the missionaries like David Nimstone, who helped to end the Arab slave trade in East Africa. Mm-hmm. So he should be taught. But equally, the persecution of the Boers and the concentration camps mm-hmm. used against them, uh, 26,000 of them. Uh, there's a girl called Lizzie Van, Z- Van Zyl. I would say Google her name and see what she looks like because what the British did to, to the Boers was just terrible. Mm-hmm. Also to the, the Irish, uh, Of course, to the Irish, the Black and Tans, mm-hmm. Black and uh, Tans the, yeah. the Amrista massacre, the um the the Indian mutiny of eighteen fifty seven, mm-hmm. and how that was dealt with. Um, Even in Africa. In Africa, the Mau Mau, yeah. uh, like the very poor way that South Africa was set up as administration and the subsequent apartheid regime, how um, President Nkrumah of Ghana was was treated and was falsely arrested, um, Kenyatta of Kenya was also falsely uh, falsely arrested under spurious claims. Are, tr- are children learning this in school? Only at A level. Only at A level. And very few. But to that don't. extent. Yeah, to that extent. Yeah. Yeah. But only okay. you know, like when it's in year eight, we'll just teach. Oh, 
no, a child's consciousness isn't truly really awakened at that point. Mm. So we'll teach ha- how many quite people... simplistically like about the slave triangle. So would you say in, in the kind of in secondary then, mm. before they move on to A level, mm. um, are they taught about the obviously Second World War? So the, 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 it, the... It, it, it it it's it's completely down to the school that you're in. Mm. Yeah, what what is taught. Okay, so you can't you know, you've got a limited amount of curriculum time, so you have to choose uh, elements of, of history. And then it's so polit- history is so political because you know you've got like a kind of right and white population that probably wants British history to be taught, and then you've got a more multicultural population that says you know yeah. maybe what about our history? Looking at yeah at, at world yeah. world events and obviously yeah. BAME history as well. So this is obviously I mean which is part of the cultural which yeah. is now part of the you know we've got to look at the like so I always teach about the Indian Army yeah and how important they were in World War One and World War Two. Yeah. Lawrence Fox said um... he, he's an idiot. He's an idiot. <laughs> Sorry, it's just he's an idiot. he doesn't know his history. He but I, th- I think he think he, he's not a historian. and He shouldn't have made that comment. So yeah. on on that and on many things that if I ever mention him again, you'll slap me. No, he. I, I just think that you shouldn't make comments on history if you don't know. If you don't know. And the yeah, scene, but obviously, right? Yeah. Let's see Lawrence Fox. Yeah. Mm. So he's gone through an education system. A yeah. very privileged system. A very so privileged let's, let's system. Not, so let's not forget the privilege. Okay, the, so, so the privilege... That isn't just white. It's based yeah, on wealth. It's based on wealth, which is mainly white. Which is mainly white, yeah. Okay. <laughs> right, no, it is okay. mainly white. I'm right. not denying that. Okay, so yeah. he's gone through this system. So, well, wealth isn't universally white. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Arab slave trade as well. They benefit yeah. from well, the slave the, trade. The, the Barbary slave trade yeah. uh, was, was awful, and... Um, I think Saudi Arabia only emancipated their slaves in the 1950s. Yeah, so only recent. Very, yeah. you know, so... Yeah, but still, um, so so that was a little bit of a tangent. That was a little bit of a tangent. But, but the point I was going to get is, is that Lawrence Fox has been through this education system, has, educa- oh, has, has not, the, the maybe, privilege... I, 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 you know, to be honest, I don't know what school him? he's gone to. I would assume he went to a private school because of the way he speaks. Yeah. Um, but, I'm, you know, I'm not sure. He might have been elocuted because he's an actor. So should he not know these things then about the First World War and the, the Sikh involvement? Oh, well, he should, but then we could argue that history's been whitewashed because I certainly didn't know about the massive um, role of the Indian Army. I did. Until I'd studied... Uh, I, I started teaching history uh, and British A-level. I didn't know that there were 2.5 million soldiers, Indian soldiers in World War Two, 1 million soldiers, Indian soldiers in World War One. Yeah. I didn't know. I think fifty thousand Indian troops died in World War One, and is that because so, of Saving Private Ryan and films <laughs> like that, that that don't really include? Well, like the American media is extremely biased towards um, the American impact on World War Two, and that's just a false narrative. Ninety mm. percent of World War Two was fought on the Eastern Front. Yeah, you know, like most people don't know who the first man in space Soviets. is. Soviets. Most people don't know who the first man in space is. Yeah, who was it? Um, Neil Armstrong probably wrong that's wrong that's the first man on the moon oh so yeah he, on the moon yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So who's the first man in space who's the first man in space no, um, no, I, do no I do know I do <laughs> yeah. know one minute I've, I've got a big catalogue in my head yeah. so you have to bear with me a minute right. so one minute da, 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 da. I do know this give me give me the first initial why why yeah why oh that Russian fella isn't it um, Russian he was Russian yeah yeah um, I, don't, I can't remember his name but I knew he was Russian Yuri I did say that Yuri Geller. <laughs> Yuri Geller, no, Yuri Gagarin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And the, you know, they're the first country to get a satellite in space as well. First country yeah. to get a. But satellite that was that was the race to space between the states and and. I mean, uh, they, they might have stole some German scientists when they invaded uh, Germany after, during World War Two. Yeah, well, but um, yeah. because obviously they had the rocket yeah. technology. But anyway, we're getting massive tangents. Yeah, but very massive interesting tangent. though. Very interesting. History is um, always interesting. And it's never ending, and there's always something new to learn. Do you know what they say? History. It's one thing after another. It is. I, I like that. One thing after another. Or one thing before. I think that's before. from The History Boys by that playwright. What's his name? See, I know this you don't. Yeah. yeah. Do you know his name? No. No. Oh, is it Bennett? <laughs> anyway, I Golden. Know. Golden Bennett. He was actually a newspaper uh, editor. Yeah, and he sent Henry Morton Stanley to find David Livingstone, who was a missionary who contributed to the end of the Arab slave trade. But there you go. Yeah, there you go. Mr. Google. Mr. Go- well, it's all, it's all up there. <laughs> A very limited amount of knowledge I have. I have. There are many things. Um, there are many things. Yes. Yeah, many, many things. Okay, um, I think that's it for today then. If it is, 45 minutes. 45 it's, minutes? It's pushing it. Well, people, I, I wow. think most people watch one minute and, go, <laughs> and say, that was great. Do you reckon Lawrence Fox will watch it again? Or? Uh, Lawrence Fox is probably too busy bathing in his white privilege. Yeah. <laughs>
Right, I guys. can make white privilege jokes too, too, you see. Yeah. Well, right, there you go. All right. Until next time. Thank you, um, Doc. I, I should call you Doctor. I don't know why you really? haven't done a PhD. Really? I, I, well, I didn't have the privilege. You didn't have the privilege? I had, I, you know, I had, Mans was on the streets. Man, and, oh, Mans was yeah, working. Yeah, well, Mans was working in Sainsbury's and eating reduced cornflakes. Oh. You know, like, like to get through education. Yeah. Nice. I didn't get through education, so you're more privileged well, than me. I think my accent has, has changed, though. I think I used to have a more proletarian accent. I was more proletarian than now. She's more like white geezer. Yeah. What's happening, mate? Yeah, white, white geezer. But um, when I went to university and when, when I travelled, I, I lost it. Right. What made you lose it? Well, I had to be understood. So yeah. you speak. Clearer. Yes, rather than proper action. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. Nice. All right. All well, right. thanks for tuning in, guys. Exactly. And remember, Plato the Republic, if you haven't read it, this guy right here, yeah? He's a top geezer. Don't worry about these books. In fact, mine, yeah? But yeah, you can get it from all good bookstores. And, or you uh, can download it online for free. Or if you, yeah, if you've yeah. got a Kindle, it's free. Because like, there's no copyright. I mean, you'll probably disagree with everything that's that's in it. But um, it's definitely a good read. But, He's yeah. my dad. Boogie, woogie, woogie. <laughs> <laughs> right. See you later, guys. See ya. Bye.